Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to start off by asking you both, how has it felt being in this band over the last four years? Because it has been such a whirlwind from your demo album going out there and doing so well to where we are today. What's it been like being a part of the band during that time? We're talking about the decline of the band over those over those years. Yeah, we're still sitting in the same room for, from four years ago. <laughs> Same fucking seats. Yeah. <laughs> but Fuck, I don't know, man. It's, yeah, it's been a it's been a wild ride. Like uh, when you put it like that, yeah. You know that. I mean, fuck. It's been it's, yeah. Uh, it, we really, honestly, haven't stopped this entire time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just been go go go. Just totally blown away by the response to the the demo. You know what? We sold what a thousand copies of that demo like who the fuck does that and why i don't know why i can't point to why it's not that good you know <laughs> and then now we're here second album and it fucking kills i think it's our best work i mean you kind of have to say that but i nice. i genuinely do think it's our best work it fucking kill i don't know man it's crazy it's crazy yeah well i agree that this is an absolutely amazing album tell us a little bit about what you guys were preparing for heading into this album, because so many bands struggle with their second album. Do you, were you nervous about that second album, or how did you go about approaching it? I'm always, always nervous about everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, I never got to a second album with my old band, and um, I felt the pressure then, and that never happened, so that was maybe a relief. And um, now we've got the... I mean, fuck, who's not going to have pressure? Unless their first album sucked, you're going to have pressure to, you know, not on, not only on yourself, but, you know, to the people that are going to listen. Is it as good or better? Or, you know, possibly worse. But um, preparing for it, man, like, if we had it our way, it would have been out last year. But, fuck, man, we forgot how long it takes and how much is involved in an album, especially with all the touring yep. to... To, to Europe and shit really kind of sets you back. But um, we're here, it's done, we're happy, we're still working. We got, we're just doing, um, we just got back tonight from uh, editing the second video single. Awesome, awesome. Well, we cannot wait to see that. You mentioned about being a band on the go. What's this year been like for you? Because we're still in lockdown here in Melbourne. What's it yep. been like for you? having the lockdown was that a chance for you guys to reset the batteries a little bit that was a chance for us yeah definitely reset the batteries but also um we finished a lot of this album yeah <laughs> while we're in lockdown yeah we um finished most of it we got a studio in town close to us and we were just there just finishing the shit yeah it was great dave your vocals on this album are just out of this world i i mentioned in my review that this album starts off with a scream from you and it just gets better and better. Tell us a little bit about your vocals. How did you discover that you had such unique vocals when you were younger? Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. think you did. No, I didn't. Uh, uh, it wasn't until we um, needed to... When we started the band, we were like, okay, sweet, we got... Me, my old drummer, who I had waiting for a new band, Nick. Nick, and then when I met Dave, we were like, sweet, we've got these three of us, we can make some songs, and then it was like, what the, what are we going to do for a singer, you know? And I think Dave said, let me, get, let me try, and I heard some demos, and I was like, fuck, man, we don't even need a singer, you know, just learn to play and sing, and... That's it. Only three of us. Yeah. You mentioned before that this is your best album. I said in my review that this is the album where it feels like everything comes together uh, for you guys, especially, Chris, your guitar work on tracks like I and Genocide, I think, is going to put you out there into the stratosphere of great guitarists. Tell us a little wow. bit about how it felt in the studio. Did it feel like everything came together perfectly this time? Uh, I, I think so. Yeah, ma'am. Um, definitely know what we definitely know what we're what we're doing and um, where we where we not where we want to head because we just want to make more cool shit. But you know, 
it was it was definitely a lot it felt a lot more together and we knew you know we learned from the first album about what we wanted to achieve even more i mean we didn't want to change anything it was just we just wanted to do it better and and faster and and i i know now like how to push chris outside of his comfort zone yeah i definitely definitely had to learn some shit because dave also we write dave writes a lot of the guitar work too he's a very talented man and um well thank you (laughs) and between (laughs) um between us you know we write the songs together but um, I definitely was put in a different position of learning someone else's uh, techniques and riffs and, um, you know, stuff like Iron Genocide and stuff like that. I had to do that. And, um, you know, we can play it all live. It just takes a bit of practice, especially since we haven't played for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, it felt like you guys were willing to try things to be a little bit different this time as well. Like the, the track, The Cross, that long instrumental opening... Um, I think Organ appeared on one of the tracks. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you guys wanted to try differently on this album. Yeah, I wanted, um, you know, like there's a, there's a, there's a a phenomenon when you, when you hear like a really fast, like really fast album from a band, it can get kind of monophonic, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, it becomes, it kind of blurs and then it sort of stops having any sort of, you know, movement in it. Does yep. it make any sense? Yeah, yeah. I want to sort of break it up a little bit, but still not lose any of that tension and not lose any of that sort of diamond, you know, dynamic, you know, sort of forward movement kind of shit. And I wanted to, I wanted it like, I wanted to try and get like haunted, leave the, leave the listener feeling haunted, but at the same time, you know, on the edge of their seat, about to get their face ripped off. Yep. Um, in terms of the some of the slower stuff, um, I, I don't think it's um, we're not going into a new territory or anything. It's um, there's still a lot of things in the genre to explore that we haven't explored, and 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 under the under the umbrella of you know speed metal. Yeah. Just because you're playing fast all your songs are fast doesn't mean you can't have like a fucking kick-ass old school slow song you know everyone does everyone's got one yep yep so it's just you just don't you just don't want too many of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you guys mentioned before that you recorded some of this while the lockdown was on did that help focus on the recording because you didn't have things like touring and and stuff like that out there and also how has the the lockdown changed how you've kind of brought this album out yeah, well, um, I mean, look, we all got jobs, we're all busy in life, but all our, most of our spare time is, you know, catching up and making cool shit. So lockdown definitely had no work. Well, Dave, you were still working some some part, yeah, say. So, meh. Yeah, meh. meh. I was um, at home watching movies and playing guitar when we, were, when we weren't recording, but... Um, yeah, lockdown. I mean, fuck. We don't. We don't now. We don't get to tour necessarily. You know, like we would. We would love to be in Europe. Yeah, we wanted, on, on, our, on, on our album release, we wanted to do New Zealand, Australia, of course. But uh, now that's just turned into one. We've got one release show booked for November six. No yeah. restrictions. Just you know, all the good stuff. Um, we came out of lockdown and. Everything went back to normal for about two, three months, I think. You know, no restrictions on anything. And then second wave came and we just went down to smaller numbers. But, I mean, fuck, I wouldn't be caught dead playing a show to 20-seated people, you know. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So that's that's getting lifted next week, our restrictions. So back to normal then and hopefully, fingers crossed, for a while. Yeah. I was going to ask that, actually. Have they given an indication when you can go back playing shows because i know here in australia western australia are playing shows now with restrictions but here in victoria look shit we'll be lucky if we have shows before christmas i think right yeah so um we had a series of different levels and um once everything got lifted once we're all back to normal everything was back to normal like literally back to normal i thought okay fuck people are going to be scared to go out 
and mingle with other people, but that wasn't the case. Everyone just went fucking even harder than before. Yeah, everyone went nuts. Yeah, nuts. Literally, all the shows were booked out, and all the shows were full, and this is all just local shit. Yeah. Um, hard, hard to book dates and shit, and that was cool. So, um, but uh, yeah, back to normal next week with awesome. a bit of luck. These tracks are going to sound absolutely amazing live off this new album as well. How excited are you guys about being able to to get out there and 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 play these live? Oh, it's the most fun you can have with the clothes on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Now be good. I mean, look, some of these songs have been kicking around for a while since we started writing the album, but um, yeah, now definitely, definitely. Uh, now that people have heard them in recording, you know, first single, second single, shit like that, we'll definitely be pumping those out. Yeah, I get the feeling that this album also is going to win you guys over a legion of more fans as well, of some new fans. Are you are you prepared for that, to have some new fans jump on board? We need all the fans we can get. I mean, <laughs> it's a fucking small, it's a small genre. It's a, it's a, it's a very niche market. Um, I would be upset if we put out a second album and um, we didn't gain <laughs> a few more fans. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we definitely got... something wrong if that was the case. <laughs> well, guys, I know that there's been a lot of people who have been uh, listening to the singles on our show and have been absolutely loving it. So is there anything you would like to say to all of our listeners out there before they go out and grab a copy of the album? Um, uh, you got to say... You got something to say? I want to thank um, every fan out there that's, um, <laughs> that's writing into your show. And um, you're not going to be disappointed with the album. If you like what you've heard so far, which is one song, <laughs> second song comes out next week, then I guess you'll have a bit more of a um, a bit more of an idea of what you're going to get. But man, fuck! If you like it, you like it. You know, you're gonna, you know what you're going to get. Exactly. Well, guys, congratulations on such an amazing album, and hopefully we get to see you play here in Melbourne when we uh, finally get out of prison here. As soon as, as soon as possible, we'll be um, we'll be coming over to Melbourne. One hundred percent, fucking love Melbourne. Awesome. Well, guys, you have a great night, and um, we'd love to have you in the studio when you're here in Melbourne. Definitely. Bye. Cheers, man. Thanks. Thanks, oh. heaps. You have a good night too, man. You too, my guys. See you later. Okay. Bye. See ya.